location of things. Excuse me. The location and the internet of things. Woo! Oh, are we going? So, well, what is the internet of things? Uh, the general idea is that uh, quite rapidly, normal everyday things are going to become addressable on the internet. So you'll be able to query them, you'll be able to control them where applicable. And location is going to have a huge impact on how you interact with those things. So take my coffee machine. Uh, this takes a few minutes to get started, so I really would like to be able to uh, basically uh, turn it on remotely, and I'd like it to tell me if the coffee bean container is empty in the evening, because when I get up in the morning, I'm desperate for coffee and I don't want to have to scramble around. I'd like my uh, iPhone alarm to talk to the coffee machine so it knows what time to turn itself on in the morning, and it can adjust to be earlier when I have a flight to catch at DIA. But I only want that to happen when I'm at home, so location is important there. When I do have that early flight, I'd like my iPhone also to talk to the uh, airline scheduling system. And if uh, the plane is delayed, I don't have to get up at 4 o'clock, I can get an extra hour of sleep. Uh, did I mention I'm not a morning person? I don't like that kind of thing. Um, so it, in this all, all this kind of interaction between objects, basically, your, uh, your phone is going to be a proxy for yourself. I mean, that's really going to be how you communicate with these other objects, how they communicate with you, and how your location is determined in many cases, but not all. I caught up. Your car is going to be another location-aware thing in this whole network, so it's going to be permanently connected to the internet wirelessly, it's going to have a GPS, that's going to be a huge source of real-time traffic information. We're already starting to see that on a small scale, but it will grow rapidly. Um, as you're driving along, your car will communicate with gas stations along your route, it will be negotiating for gas prices, doing things like reverse auctions and so on. And there will be factors in like, you know, how much gas do you have left, that kind of thing. Oh. Another really interesting location aware device is a smart key. Uh, I just keep this in my pocket. Uh, this is here today. You walk up to my car, it senses the key, and you just open the door. Uh, then you just press a button on the dash to start. You don't have to use the physical key. So before too long, our smartphones will open all doors for us, cars, etc. Uh, this is a BMW production line in Regensburg. They build multiple car models with multiple options on the same line. The guy at the top has a power wrench, and that needs specific torque settings for the car that he's particularly working on right now. They used to have to bar scan barcodes in order to download those settings. That took six seconds per car. Um, and it was kind of error prone. Now they have a high precision location system from Ubisense. And as they get close to the car, it automatically downloads the settings into that tool. So a great example of location driving tools. So there's all kinds of different location technologies that will drive these kind of things. They have radically different characteristics in the areas you can see here. Things like accuracy, cost, power, does it work indoors, the form factor. So GPS is the one we all know, of course. It's kind of commoditized, but it's still expensive, $100 even though it's mass market and up. Uh, it's battery hungry, you have to charge them nightly typically, and it doesn't work indoors. And it's kind of hard to stick on lots and lots of things. The other end of the scale is RFID tags. They cost a few cents. Uh, you can stick them on all kinds of objects. And you know sort of when they go past a scanner, so you might know it's in this building or it's in this container, but typically you can't get an accurate location across a, a broad area unless you have loads and loads of readers. Wi-Fi is applicable in various contexts. Skyhook can give you uh, locations within half a block in urban areas. Indoors you have systems like Echohow that give you approximate location to within, say, tens of feet. And then I know if I'm at home just if I'm connected to my home Wi-Fi network. Uh, video is used in various sort of control situations, things like uh, sports uh, tracking balls, increasingly used in video games for control. And then Microsoft is doing interesting things with video recognition and augmented reality tied into Photosynth. So some cool things happening there. Um, car, uh, cars we're increasingly seeing with radar-based uh, cruise control systems, so they're calculating relative uh, location in real time, controlling acceleration and braking. So another great example today of you know, objects being controlled by location. Compass, compasses don't measure location directly, but they're important for location-based apps. Um, for things like uh, pedestrian navigation and then uh, virtual reality and photography to see which way something's pointing. And then uh, ultra-wideband. Uh, this is what we do at Ubisense, and it does accurate indoor location tracking uh, at an accuracy of about 6 to 12 inches using local sensors. Um, and we're seeing a lot of interesting applications developing that. It's really quite a new market. So there's a whole host of these different location tracking applications. Which one should you use? Well, they all have different strengths and weaknesses, of course. Uh, and we're increasingly seeing lots of applications which use multiple technologies at the same time. 
But basically, this whole space is really very exciting. You know, there's all kinds of developments going on in location tracking, all these things I've talked about. Uh, and basically, you know, it's just a cool space to be in right now. So thank you very much.